Here are a few ways of installing and maintaining packages on Ubuntu that I did not discuss in my previous videos. They're not unique to Ubuntu 16.04. They've been around a long time, but they're still available and very useful. The first one is the PPA, or Personal Package Archive. It's essentially a small repository of its own dedicated to a particular application and sometimes a particular version of an application like a more recent update. And if you install this in your system and update your package list, your system will use this package in preference to an older package. The general syntax is sudo add-apt-repository and then the PPA name you can substitute the actual name for what I show in italics slash PPA. Then the second line is usually the same for every one that's either sudo apt get update or sudo apt update And the last line is specific to the package name, sudo apt get install, whatever the package name is, or sudo apt install, whatever the package name is. In the following example, I'm going to copy and paste these commands from the application's website directly into the terminal emulator. Remember, when you use sudo for the first time in a particular instance of the terminal emulator, you'll have to enter your password and press enter. You don't have to do it for subsequent times, but if you open a new instance of the terminal emulator, you'll have to do it at least the first time for each one. Here I'm going to install the PPA from the latest version of OpenShot. I'm going to copy and paste these instructions to the terminal, one at a time. Press Enter. I'm going to enter my password. Nothing shows. I'm going to press enter, press enter to continue, all right that's added the PPA to the repositories. Now I'm going to update the list. Now I'm going to install OpenShot-Qt. Do I want to continue? Yes. Why? All right, that's complete. Now, this is the old version of OpenShot that came with the repository. 
It's version 1.4.3. This is the new version of OpenShot that I installed with the PPA. It's version 2.0.7. Now I'd like to discuss the Synaptic Package Manager. It's technically a graphical package manager in that it runs in a graphical environment, but it doesn't have the pretty pictures of some of the more heavily illustrated package managers. The disadvantage is that you really have to know the name of the package you want to install or come very close to the exact name. The advantage is that it contains everything in the Ubuntu repositories or any other repositories that you may add while the more heavily illustrated package managers do not. Synaptic is the default package manager for Debian. It may not come installed with the particular distribution of Ubuntu that you are using. I believe it's installed with Ubuntu, but in the others you have to download it, but it's very easy to get. If You, you can get it from any of the illustrated package managers. You can if you're using Ubuntu Mate, you can install it from the Software Boutique, or you can use either of these two command lines to get it, sudo apt get install synaptic, or sudo apt install synaptic. Now I'm going to start synaptic. Enter my password, click on Authenticate, wait for it to populate the list. Now I'm going to install the Chromium web browser. Mark for installation. Click on Apply.
you can see a lot more details about what's going on than you can with the other graphical package managers. Right, all the changes are applied. So I'm going to close that window and wait for the list to repopulate. <clears throat> now you see that uh, Chromium browser is installed. There are other things you can do with Synaptic. By clicking on Reload, you can refresh the package list. You can mark all of the upgrades and use that to update your system. However, I think it's better to use your update manager for that. Now under settings, you can see which repositories are active and you can change that information. This is Ubuntu software. This is other software. You can see that I have quite a number of PPAs installed. I can uncheck those if I don't want to use those. This sets which kind of updates will be made. This shows the security keys. I'm not using any additional drivers and I'm not interested in developer options. Now I'm going to discuss downloading and installing Debian packages directly. Debian software packages all have the .deb extension, but you have to be careful because some of these are intended for Debian only and some of these are intended for Ubuntu only. Sometimes they'll work on either, but the systems are slightly different, so they may not. In addition to that, I'm going to discuss the GDebi lightweight package installer. If you download a Debian package and click on it, your system will automatically install it. If you don't have GDebi installed, it will use this huge, cumbersome graphical package manager which uses a lot of resources and takes a lot of time. If you have GW installed and you designate it as the application you want to use in installing the package, it'll work a lot faster. Now here I'm going to attempt to download the new Vivaldi web browser using a deb file. As you can see, I have two deb files available and two RPM files available, which would be for Fedora. And I'm going to use a 64-bit version because my system is 64 bits. Now you see the file has the extension .deb. I am going to save the file first and install it later. So I'm going to click on install. Now the file has downloaded. Now this file was in my downloads folder, but I've moved it into a separate folder of its own, just to simplify the way things look on the screen. And I'm going to right click on it. 
the first option here is to open with the software install, which I don't want to do. The second one is to open with GW package installer, which I do want to do. So I'm going to click on that. under my password If I want to see what's going on, I can click on Terminal. The installation is finished, so I can close. I could reinstall or remove the package. I don't want to do either one of those. There's Vivaldi. I'm going to try running it. There it is. I don't want to go into a lot of detail about the particular browser. I just want to show you how to install something using a Debian package. The disadvantage of using a Debian package is that these will not be updated automatically. But there may be some reasons why you don't want something updated automatically. Some application you've been using for years and you don't want it to change, for instance. Also, these Debian packages can be moved around. You can save them like any other file, install them on any other version of Ubuntu up to a point. At some point, the system itself may change so much that the package is no longer useful. But I've used some packages for many, many years without ever updating them. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.